Welcome back to the Smithy, everyone. Uh, today we're going to be talking about making this game. Um, <coughs> it's gone by a, a lot of different names. Um, Ring the Bull, Ringing the Bull, um, Ring Toss. Uh, there's a lot of different names for it, and it's pretty, pretty dang simple. You get a ring, a string, some mare to hang the string, and you have a hook to be able to capture the ring on. Jesus Christ, I can't even get on there. Um, I've only seen one other blacksmith on YouTube um, make a, a video about making a game, and that was John Switzer. And that was part of his um, Countdown to Christmas video series. He'd made a cup and ball tool, which is, uh, he'd used, I think it was a section of pipe, they would neck down one end and, and flared out the other end, you know, to be able to capture a ball in. Really neat. Um, this is not a, a hard project. This is very simple, and I think it's important because it's something that you know we as blacksmiths don't usually get to do because you know we'll, we'll make you know hooks and various hardware that we just don't get to you know yeah we'll we'll hang our hat on it or something like that. We don't actually get to use and have fun with. You know, no one else you know has fun using it. It's like, you know, you forge a drawer pull, it's like, you know, I'm opening a drawer, am I having fun? No, but this is a toy. So I, I thought this was just something that is a little, a little different. You know, something you can have fun with and your friends can have fun with. So let's go ahead and take a look at what tooling I used to get this thing made. Sorry if everybody's getting the heebie-jeebies there from motion sickness. All right, and that is not level. All right, let me go over the tools and the materials. Uh, a lot of these tools are not absolutely critical. The hammer and the anvil is you're gonna need some tongs. Um, I used a chisel, this is a regular straight chisel, and a center punch just for uh, decorative purposes, strictly de decorative. You know, these are not necessary. Um, one thing I think is necessary is either a ball punch or I've got a, a ball top tool here that I can, you know, use blacksmith's third hand or you know hold fast or something or other and, and make a depression in the steel for the uh, screw holes to be able to mount the thing i think it's important you need to be able to mount this thing flush you don't want screw heads sticking out um, there's a hole punch if you feel like punching the holes once you've made the depression with this or your ball punch or whatever, you can feel free to drill these. Yeah, I personally think that's a better option than trying to punch them. So that's <coughs> optional also. Touch mark, I use that. Um, some scrolling pliers. Uh, again, if you want to get fancy with the ends and stuff like that, you can, you can use these. These are completely, you know, optional stuff. Um, if you're good at doing scrolls over your anvil and your horn, you don't need this. This is just a, a real handy jig for making a bunch of different size, you know, scrolls and hooks. So you set this in the vise, you know, it mounts in the vise this way. You can, you just, you know, say it was a vice. And then you can, you know, do a little scroll at the end of your hook or whatever and use this. 
throw your material in there, clamp it, and bend it around. It's just a hook jig. That's optional again also. Um, you're gonna need brushes, regular, you know, I prefer the wire brush like this, not the butcher's block brush. You know, on smaller stuff because these just grab too much. This just gets stuff clean. Uh, you can use a brass brush if you want to add a little panaz to the the hook end, you know, make the target a little sparklier or whatever. Um, that's plenty fine there. That's really it. You know, there, there's not a lot of tools needed to make this project. You know, your real basics are that. You know, everybody has this. If you don't have one of these, you can make one. You know, most people have a ball punch of some sort. Um, the other thing, it's really good to have some beeswax and a rag. Just coat it. Um, again, it's a simple thing and you can do a lot of variants with this. So I'll show you sort of the basic hook. I've got one here. You want this distance between the point of the hook and the back plate about two and a half, maybe three inches at the most just so the ring has enough room to swing around and then land on the, the hook. Again, this is just, you know, decorative punch and chisel work. Um, you can get fancier with your hooks if you want. You know, I did this one here, put a little bit of work with a guillotine tool into this just to make it a little interesting looking, but same principle. You want to have room for that hook to fly around. And the last one I did, uh, went ahead and punched this. This was the same whole punch as that. It took me forever to get that kind of, you know, opened up and stuff like that. But, you know, it's just same kind of guillotine work. Almost like, a, it reminds me of Roy, uh, at Christ Iron Ironworks, you know, the um, acanthus leaves sort of style. It looks kind of, I don't know, insectish or something or other to me. But let's take a look at the game that I've got set up in fours over here. So let's see if I can not make everyone sick. And get that out of the way. So it's just pretty simple hook. Uh, just did some chisel cuts and punches just for the heck of it. But these and these, you know, screw holes, I did use the uh, ball punch to recess. So they're, they're flush mounted. You know, you don't want the, the ring when it's coming in to, you know, snag on those. Make sure your hooks, you got a good bit of distance there. And, you know, some, some mounting holes. So it's nothing super complicated about how this is, you know, forged or anything like that. The, um, the bar here is you know, if i can not mangle everything while moving this it's just got a loop forged in up here just to hold the string and this um the ring i just hammer textured it this is actually a section of thick walled pipe that i just cut a slice off of but you can use um washers or anything like that but the big key is when you set it up to make sure that the center of that hook or that the, the point of the hook goes through the center of the ring 
that's easy but the back plate that I used is a piece of uh, really old I think it this looks like wormy chestnut to me actually but it's tongue and groove flooring it's about a half inch thick and you know you can use whatever you want to for the uh, the backing plate or the mounting plate uh, I've got like I said a couple of screw holes uh, there and there that's plain because it it wants to cantilever out but that's it I mean it's not a complicated you know thing to to forge it's just a hook and something to suspend the hook these are great fun you know they're something that pretty much anybody can do um, I'll go ahead and uh, give you a sample of some of the materials I use for that particular you know this particular project For the, the long bar, uh, we have a couple of these laying around. They're really old garden stakes. You know, you can see it's built like a, it's got a little thin piece of plate here, sheet metal. And it's real similar to like a, a fence post. But, you know, this one's knackered up and rusted that doesn't matter you know just forge out one of them into the hook you know you can make this out of one piece which i'll show you in a second you know on the other end you can you know punch your holes to mount it or whatever but this is a 3 8 material brown stock and again Another little section of, of 3 8 round sock for the hook. You know, you can use a flat bar. This is quarter by inch flat bar. You know, you can make hooks out of this. Uh, you can use round sock, you can use what, whatever is available. You know, it, it it's not uh, a real material specific project you know there's nothing complicated about making it uh, here's one I've got in the works currently now I'll try to show um, so this one's got like a really small loop that'll be for hanging the the cord or the string off of and then the other end is the hook I beat this into a really thin pointy taper round taper and I figured uh, I better put a little scroll on that at least so someone didn't get killed on it but again I'll come in about eh, that far bend a 90 degree angle on it punch you know with the top tool and you know kind of swell the material out drill it I, I'd prefer to drill it better accuracy and then come up another inch or so and then put like I don't know about like 45 degree bend you know going this way so that your hook sticks out your bar sticks up and then it sticks out this way which is where you hang your uh, string from so you can all you can do this all out of one bar I think this is about uh, let me look let me get a tape measure thrown on something nope, a tape measure. let's see what we got here this is about four feet yeah so it's a, a four foot section of three eighths round stock you can make this in uh, one piece but 
it's a really neat little game. You know, if you you can go bonkers on this thing. You know, you can make it as complicated as you want to make it. You can make it as simple as you want to make it. You can take the uh, little hooks and uh, forge these into kind of like a, a bull's head. You know, have the hook come out. So you can ring the bull, you know, or, you know, you, you can do a lot of interesting stuff with these. You know, they don't have, all have to be the exact same. I think that's part of the fun, you know. But very simple project. I'll make a video as soon as I can on uh, putting one of these things together you know, start to finish, but not today because my back is shafted. I moved a, like a 10 foot long um, propane tank the other day. So yeah, I think I kind of, kind of messed up one of my uh, discs in the back. So not a lot of hammer time today and I've been up and under a, well, under a dump truck fixing the frame to that. So, not today. But, food for thought for an upcoming project. And uh, I know a lot of people are probably gonna ask maybe like, you know, the, the length of the backing board and stuff like that. It really just depends on how long your length is from your, your hook to your pole that holds the, the string. You, you don't want them like crammed super close. You give them a little bit of space. And then it's just whatever looks aesthetically, you know, pleasing to you. Use that. Um, even the one piece thing, really you don't need a backing, backing plate. You can just mount it to, you know, a stud in your wall or anything like that. But the cool thing is about this game is it's not dangerous, everybody can play it. You know, it's not loud, it's not crazy or anything. Kids can play it. And you can, if it's just that one piece, you can mount it all to just one stud in your house, you know, with two screws. So, pretty non-destructive mounting, you know, stuff. But, you know, again, if you're making a separate back piece, just make it to whatever looks good to you. Um, you can also make this in two parts. Just make the hook with a little backing plate, and then you can forge a eye ring that screws into your ceiling. Basically, like kind of equal distance between like how high the hook is from the uh, screw. You know, so it's kind of a an even distance, but. I'm getting into uh, making a video about this soon. Yeah, you know, I'm sorry I haven't, I haven't put out a video in a while. Yeah, you know, work's been pretty hectic, and I've been trying to figure out how to do one of these so I can do it in a quick, easy video. You know, again, I I just don't have a lot of space on my phone, so videos have to be pretty quick. Um, if you like the video, please. Like, share, subscribe um, to all the fellow bro hammers and hammer sisters out there. Thank you for your content. And uh, everyone appreciates it. So I hope you have a good day.